My next video was going to be on Winston Churchill and all the bad stuff he did. Problem is, there's so much of the bad stuff that the amount of research I'm having to do has been a bit overwhelming, and the weight of the subject matter itself has started to get to me. It's just not very funny. It's difficult, and let's be honest, not really appropriate to make jokes about racism and mass starvation. If you don't know what I'm referring to, stay tuned. So, rather than succumb to the temptation to huddle in a dark room and listen to Nine Inch Nails, I'd rather tackle something more light-hearted. Pugs. Because they kind of look like Churchill, and there's a lot wrong with them. Jokes aside, I've been planning to talk about pugs anyway. It's not that I dislike them. In fact, every pug I've ever met has been nice to me. They're doing better than humans in that regard. And I have fond memories of watching Frank the Pug in Men in Black. You don't like it, you can kiss my furry little butt. But for me, pugs represent one of the most repugnant ways in which we abuse our power over animals, by manipulating their very genetics for our own superficial and selfish purposes, regardless of the consequences to the animals themselves. It's called syringomyelia, and it's caused because the cavalier's skull is now too small for its brain. Humans and dogs have coexisted for thousands of years. We've bred our canine companions in order to encourage certain useful traits like being able to guard things or sniff out drugs, and that's fine. I don't have a problem with dog breeding itself, because certain dogs are bred to encourage traits which make them useful to humans without suffering poor health as a result. For example, my dog Luna is a Sprocker Spaniel, a cross between a Springer and a Cocker Spaniel. This makes her an excellent gun dog, very healthy, highly intelligent, and very cute. It also means she's completely mental. The sort of breeding I'm talking about is a comparatively recent thing. Starting in the late 19th century, people with too much time on their hands and nothing else interesting about them decided that it would be a good time to start comparing dogs, to see whose dog had the shiniest coat, the cutest nose, and the most majestic farts. Competitions began, like Crufts, and organisations like the Kennel Club were set up to oversee them. Dogs became status symbols, not because of their useful traits, but purely because of how they looked. Of course, some people viewed dogs this way before, but now the desire to have the perfect dog intensified beyond all reasonable measure. Such dogs then became valuable, so breeders multiplied like... Well, like dogs, I guess. Selectively breeding animals and then having them compete against each other is fine if it's in Pokemon, despite what Peter will tell you, but it's not always fine in real life where there are real world consequences. Because in order to produce the perfect dog with the perfect traits, they had to be intensely bred with others of their own breed who had these desired traits, resulting in so-called pedigree or pure breed dogs. These pure breeds are considered superior to both crossbreeds like my Luna and mongrels, who are so mixed that they have no defined breed, despite the fact that these latter kinds of dogs are in fact healthier. This sort of thinking leads to some questionable tendencies. It's a healthy, beautiful puppy, there's nothing wrong with it except it hasn't a ridge, and you say, well, actually, they're meant to have ridges. It's not easy, and um, usually we end up having to go to an old vet that we've known for years to just quietly put them to sleep. I mean and there's the problem. Much like what happens when humans interbreed too often with others too closely related to them, over time the offspring come to suffer sometimes horrific genetic consequences. And when you restrict the gene pool too much, as is often the case with pedigree breeding, negative traits are far more likely to be spread throughout the resulting generations. So how has this affected pugs? Well, this is what they used to look like. Hundreds of years ago, people thought they were cute. And they were. But then some entitled rich people decided that this wasn't cute enough for them. They thought this could be vastly improved by shortening the legs, thereby making them less proportional to the body, and by shortening the snout. Apparently sawing your dog's legs off and smashing its face in with a hammer was considered unethical, but producing the same effects over time is alright. Because of this process, pugs now suffer from a range of serious health conditions. Their body shape means they tend to have high blood pressure and heart problems. It doesn't help that they don't tend to get much exercise, but then again their short legs mean that they often have gait so abnormal that it's painful for them to even walk, so they're f***ed either way. Those wrinkles and skin folds can become infected if their owners are too lazy to scrub between them. As you can imagine from having a face resembling the product of a car crusher, pugs have a very hard time breathing. Have you ever heard a pug breathe? Seriously, listen. That's not healthy. Nothing should ever breathe like that. Oh God. As a result, pugs tend to have low levels of oxygen in their blood, which causes all sorts of further problems. And because dogs regulate their temperature through breathing, understandably, pugs tend to overheat. Combined with their prominent eyes, their lack of a snout also makes them more susceptible to eye injuries or even eye prolapse. Oh, and that double curled tail that looks so adorable? It's a defect, a genetic defect that can lead to paralysis. All this so that pugs could have features that certain people think are cute. That's cute, is it? F off. 
As I said, I don't dislike pugs. I'm picking on them specifically because of all the breeds we've messed up this way, they are by far the most popular. The extent to which people love pugs and insist that they're cute is ridiculous to the point it makes me physically sick. I mean, look at this. Proof pugs are the most majestic dogs. Really, Buzzfeed? Some people want pugs simply because they're fashionable and various celebrities have them. Like PewDiePie and a bunch of other people I don't care about. What a compelling reason. I don't understand it, but people are willing to drop a lot of money on these dogs. Like serious money. Let's see how much they're selling for. £650, £900, £1000, £1000. £1180 for this thing. Okay, what's the most expensive? 4700 you could buy a decent used car for that, Jesus. It's gotten so bad that charities have started literally begging advertisers to stop using pugs because increased demand for them is causing a surge in breeding regardless of the consequences to the dogs themselves. Pugs are the most prominent example of this phenomenon, but there are others. Some of the worst include the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, which we've already seen, the Bull Terrier, the Dachshund, and the English Bulldog, which now only live for an average of six years and can no longer reproduce without medical intervention. I can't stress enough that none of this was necessary. This isn't natural selection. It's not the good, healthy genes that are being passed on. This is very much unnatural selection. The result of people's vanity, their desire that their dogs be absolutely perfect so they can live vicariously through their pets and one-up everyone else, and the greedy and unscrupulous people taking advantage of this demand. The dogs suffer so people can go, Aww. And that's why it disgusts me so much. You don't have to be a vegan or an animal rights activist to think that there's something wrong with this, because I'm neither of those things. I know there are measures to limit the negative effects of pedigree breeding, but I don't give a shit, honestly, because the most effective measure would be for people to stop forcing their vanity onto their dogs by insisting that their coats be the correct degree of shiny or that their bloodlines be pure enough. And the fact that not all these dogs suffer from all these conditions is irrelevant because we've made these ailments more likely through our own intervention. Look, I'm not saying you're a bad person for owning a pug, or for losing your shit over a video of them splashing around in the bath, or for liking any of these other dogs, but you are contributing to this situation. If you choose to like pugs, or support pedigree dog breeding, or competitions like Crofts, then you need to have a serious think about what you're validating by doing so. Danny had to sit on an ice pack to have his after-show photos taken. Because if you don't care at all, then you are just a c so what's your favourite dog breed deformity? Anything I've missed that makes you justifiably worried that the canine whores will one day rise up and overthrow us? Let me know in the comments. If you're still with me, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed that, please subscribe to see me do this more often. I would like to make this a thing, so every little helps. All likes, comments and shares are appreciated, and feel free to check out my other videos. Do you believe that the shape that's going around the show ring is the dog that is better structured to do the job it was bred to do and yet he's it's got more the dog. it's he's more got... to the breed standard are you f retarded <laughs>